I eventually got a nice plume of wood smoke rising. I know a gas stove would make life easier, but the tea never tastes so good. Jeff supplied the cake, and though Andrew soon had four very jovial anglers in his swim, the tea was excellent enough. Okay, I just got a challenge that I can't say no to. I need to make a very light rod for one of my customers. It needs to be usable, it needs to be very lightweight, and needs to be modern. Do I accept the challenge? This is rod building. Challenge accepted. I'm Gary Benny, English rod builder living in Sweden. I've been building rods for many years and now you're going to join me in my workshop going through tips, tricks, techniques, tools of the trade, all the things you want to know when you're coming to build a rod. We're going to drink a lot of tea so join me on the ride, let's have some fun. This is rod building, let's do this. Since actually getting that message, I've rang to my customer, a good friend of mine, and we went over in finer detail exactly what he is wanting for this rod. Just to make sure, because the message was a little bit vague, um, you know, he sent me the challenge, I accepted it, but I wanted to be sure exactly what he wants. I went through with him, and what he wants is a rod that he can fish, big perch, and some Xander occasionally, but he's also hooking pike and he can't have a rod that's gonna fold and be too light. Now he is a bit of an angler who flips the fish into the boat. So he wants a really light rod, but it needs to be durable. And that has drawbacks because the lighter the blank, the more sensitive it is and the more chance it's gonna be of snapping. And he wants a durable rod, so I can't be risking that. So I need to be looking at what components I can use to reduce the total weight. And with that, I've selected numerous things here and I'm gonna chuck it on some scales, I'm gonna weigh it up, I'm gonna have a look, and we're just gonna basically go through the components today, what you should be looking at to make a lightweight build and also the drawbacks of maybe choosing too light against a little bit heavier to more durable. So uh, we've got a lot to go through, let's crack on. So first things first was the blank choice. The most weight in any build, generally speaking, is the blank. And you know, he wants something that he could cast a decent gram weight with, like I said before. And, and so I know how this guy fishes, you know, he's got a real strong hook set. And so for that, I know he's gonna want something quite fast and I've opted for a mag bass. This is a two piece blank. So if he went for a one piece, then it would be slightly lighter, but he wants the pack down length of a two piece. So I've chosen the Magbag 7.3. It's a two piece, it's the eight to 15. Now this is a lightweight blank uh, for this and it only comes in at, we get the scales of truth out. I believe off memory it's about 50 grams. So it's not a heavy blank, correct. It's 52 grams. So it's a lightweight blank, but What's good about this blank is it's very versatile and it's very strong. He's gonna have no issues casting with the rubber bait and the jig head, I would say up to max about 30 grams. But it's really, really good for working around about sort of seven grams upwards, which is ideal for him when his average jig head size is 10 grams. So we're gonna be going with that. It's not overly thick. It's got really good power deep down in the butt. That's gonna be the blank to choose. Then there comes the real seat. Now, this is one that's quite tricky because real seats are a bit personal. You need it to be comfortable, it needs to be ergonomic, and to go lightweight, uh, this is where a lot of the weight is. Now, some people will opt for two-piece real seats. And personally, I'm not a fan. I mean, I've used them, and they can be quite cool looking and stuff, but when I'm fishing for long durations, I prefer a one-piece seat. That's just a personal preference thing. For me, um, I do like to touch the blank, I like a blank exposed, but it's not everything. But this guy wants modern and he wants lightweight. So let's chuck some real seats on the bench and see what we've got. So I didn't really have a lot to go with in all fairness because I know this guy really well. I fished with him quite a few times and his go-to real seat has actually always been this very common plastic real seat. He likes it, he likes the size of the trigger and everything and so, I mean, that was the first one. But on the phone I asked him, you know, that's not gonna be a super lightweight real seat and just come in at that one to, to weigh it up. I think, uh, what we're we looking at? We're looking at 25, nearly 28 grams. So. It, you know, that's not heavy, but if you think the blank is 50, 
and then the real seat is now 25, we're at 75 already. So we wanna try and reduce that. So my next option to him was, let's go upgrade a little bit and go for the CCT. So anyone who doesn't know CCT, this is compressed carbon technology. And basically what that means is, you're compressing carbon into the mold. So you use a carbon fiber blend inside this into the mold. And this makes for a very lightweight seat. Now, this seat here uh, is a razor, razor thin. It's, it's a super real seat, it's very lightweight, it's very ergonomic, I really like it. It's got a real shallow trigger actually, so uh, we'll have a look what this one comes in at. It's a light real seat, 20 grams. So already we're cutting some weight, cutting out the fat, but he did tell me money was no object, and there is something else. And there isn't any other real estate like it. It's in a box. That's the only weight with this thing. When you take it out, it's gonna float away. That's why they put it in a box, I think. And then the HCC is handcrafted carbon. Now, this real seat is, is something else. I mean, it really is mega. This is a carbon fiber blow molded real seat and hand finished each real seat is actually slightly uh, different from another. They're phenomenal. I mean, absolutely amazing. Uh, let's see what this one comes in at. So that's 18.51 grams. So we've dropped some weight, but you know what? I'm a custom guy and I reckon I can get it even lighter. And I've seen what, I, if I take off this hood that comes, this is a plastic hood. I want to see what it is with CCT hood. In actual fact, I'm liking that finish. Let's have a look what we come out now. Did we save any weight? Yeah, 17 grams, exactly. So I don't think we're gonna be getting any lighter than that for a full bodied real seat. I mean, this real seat doesn't even have cutouts, so it's a full real seat. So to compare it against these two is kind of cheating because these have to be lighter. There's less material, there's less, there's less surface area. I don't think we've got any option. It's gonna have to be the CCT. So moving on, it's the next thing is to talk about is the grips. Now this is really gonna dictate some balance weight and total weight to this guy is really important, but he also is very aware of balance weight. Now if you're not familiar with balance weight, basically we're talking about when you hold the rod, to us a few grams is impossible to feel in our hand. It's, it's we just can't, right? We're, we're not a scale. But what we can feel is balance. And if that rod is well balanced into the real seat, so in your hand, it's at the balance point, it's gonna feel lighter. I mean, you could have a rod that weighs like 28 grams, one ounce more, but if it's well balanced, you would never know. It's gonna feel lighter if it's not tip heavy. So that's the most important thing. And actually it's really tough because the lighter the components are gonna be, the harder that balance is gonna be. So I don't wanna go super lightweight on the grips, but I also need to get the rod weight down. So I'm gonna take a look. I've got some different things here. I've got some cork, I've got some EVA, and I've got some carbon. And I'm gonna compare it up and see, knowing with what he likes his rod style to be, what we can go with. We'll start with some EVA. Now, I've, this is all some pre-shaped stuff. Now, we can chuck this on the lathe. So even if we're coming in a little bit heavy, we can sand it down, we can cut it back. And that's kind of cool, that's custom. So let's have a look. This is a nice rear grip, actually. Uh, it's a bit big. Uh, see what else, this one will work. This is nice, Ooh, we'll choose that one. Now we've got another sort of shorter butt, we could take that, so this. That's nice, that's a nice rear grip. I know he does got quite big hands, so he's not gonna want the grips behind the real seat too small. We'll, we'll test that one, that could be quite a cool look. Carbon fiber, we need a butt cap, can't forget that. We do have a trim ring that's gonna go between the real seat and seat, which is that one. And this is adding a bit of weight, we could change that out. And then we need a carbon fiber. What we got here, let's see. Uh, yeah, now this is perfect. So this is actually the uh, matte black Bushido finish G2 carbon grips, split grip. Uh, that's lightweight, so, and it matches the blank. It's modern, it seems to be ticking all the boxes to me. We'll weigh that one up too. And then I guess we need to check out some cork. Now I know this guy does like cork and he likes that kind of contrast, so let's see what we got, we got, that's a small little grip, cork butt there. We could always glue some cork rings up and sand it into shape as well if we don't find something. But you know what, is cork modern? I don't think so, actually. It's it's more classic, isn't it? But you know what, we'll, we'll weigh it up anyway and we'll, we'll see what we come out with. And there's a nice rear grip. 
there we go. Let's get this one out of the bag and we'll start weighing it up and see where we come out. Now, of course, there's whining checks to go in with this as well. Any of these are gonna need, like, this is a rear trim ring to go in the back of the reel seat, so we need to include that one. Uh, the butt cap for the carbon, but we also need a butt cap that's gonna go with either the EVA or the cork. Not for that one, of course, because that has already got it built in. This one needs one. We could take something like this. It's kind of like a modern dome. It's actually one of the cart butt caps. It works really good for the spinning rods. Looks quite cool. So there we have it. That's a little selection of grips. I think we need to start looking through. Of course, like I said, we can, we can customize it. Uh, we can see what we can do, but this gives us a general kind of basis on where we're going to come out at. And I know there's a lot of discussion about what's lighter, EVA or cork. Now, that depends on the quality of the cork. I'll be totally honest, most pre-shaped grips aren't like floor grade or super floor. But anyway, enough waffling on. Let's check out the weights. Let's turn this on and we're gonna start with the EVA. So we've got a nice rear grip, which is very ergonomic. We've then got the butt grip, which is like a modern sort of slender design. And then we're gonna go with the butt cap, which matches up to the back like so. Let's chuck that one in. And then we want a trim ring because he's a bit tarty and he wants something that looks cool. So we've got 24.2 grams. That's not too bad. So let's swap out that butt because it is quite big. I know it's that modern shape I like, but let's, let's see if we use the grip I know he's going to like. And then we're going to chuck on this really small one because, you know, less than that's 15 grams. So we just saved like, what, 10 grams? Pretty good. So that's a, quite a light option at 15 grams. But I'll be totally honest, I mean, that is quite a modern look. I could sand that to shape, that's an option. So let's check out the cork. Um, standard rear grip, butt grip, butt cap, trim ring, 25 grams. So that's pretty much the same as the EVA. Like I said earlier, there's a debate on that and it's not that much in it really. It's pretty much the same. But of course, he keeps talking modern. So let, let's, uh, let's chuck that one back in uh, and take the one with a preformed butt trim ring needs to go on we've got 18 grams i mean again it makes sense less is more and i'll be totally honest guys you know if any rod build you do that's really light if you check out any rod that's lightweight there's not a lot on it you know normally it's like tiny reel seats and even like one butt grip so this guy wants something that's you know actually you can fish with and it's going to be comfortable and super lightweight doesn't need to be uncomfortable okay and then the last option we've got is the G2 carbon grips. So the G2 grips are coming in at 14 grams and with the butt cap and a trim ring, we're at 25 grams. That's pretty much the same weight as everything else. I mean, again, I can't compare using one of these little things to one of those. It's plus and minus, but there's one thing I keep coming back to is he wants modern, he does like the G2 grips, they do match the blank. And as I mentioned earlier, I need to consider that balance weight. And if I'm gonna put really light butt, I'm gonna make the tip heavy. So I'm gonna have to go with G2 grips. I think it's the right option. That's gonna be the one for this build. So guides, now this is a minefield. There's so many guides to choose from. And uh, you know, there's stainless steel, there's titanium, there's microwaves, then you've got the different ceramics, nanolite, durolite, pentalite. But I mean, this guy has said some key words to us for this build, and he wants lightweight, and I know money with no object. Um, so we're gonna be looking at uh, pentalite and titanium, but I mean, there's also some other things. I mean, normally I'd be checking out some like airwaves. Uh, if they were like price conscious, then airwaves are absolutely fantastic. You know, same weight as titanium nanolite, but like half or less than the price. So that would be a good one, uh, super lightweight, but we're gonna have to put that one to one side because even though it's lightweight and it's really durable, because no ceramic, he wants to spend more money and I know he likes titanium. So we're gonna chuck that one to one side. Uh, then we have uh, some microwave 12s. Now this is a really good set. It's got a double foot stripper uh, and double foot all the way through. Now, that's a good option. It's nanolite, it's titanium, but he wants to go really small because he's using micro braids for this fishing, like 0 0.12, 1, 4 and stuff. So he likes small guides. So even though that would be another good one, I think that one's gonna have to opt out as well. And then that leaves me with sort of two options, really. I've got pentalite titanium, which is like the top of the tree. I mean, the ceramic doesn't get any thinner than that, and the, the material from the frame doesn't get any lighter than that. It's got really good corrosion resistance. It's flexible, uh, it's strong. I mean, it's titanium. Everyone knows what titanium is. 
and I've got a set of guides in front of me. I'm going to see what it weighs in at. I'm, I'm kind of interested. I've got single foot runners and some double foot strippers. It's 1.3 grams. <laughs> That's like, do we even need to think about the weight? Anyway, it's 1.29 grams to be precise. I mean, it's like a joke. There's no tip ring there, so that's gonna add like, again, like nothing. I mean, I'm surprised these guys aren't floating up <laughs> away from me. So we're gonna take that one out. But there is something that's a bit of a drawback, uh, and that is that he loves microwaves. I'm thinking that I need to be checking out uh, a set of microwaves. Now, the lightest set of casting microwaves available are the microlites, and these things are like tiny, tiny. Um, I am just interested, this isn't even titanium, this is stainless steel, so it's actually more durable, uh, and that was kind of important to this guy when he said he wants durable. Even though titanium is super good for corrosion proof and everything, I'm just interested. I wanna see what a full set of these microlites are weighing in at, because I know he's a fan. 1.46 grams, I mean, under 1.5 grams, and it's stainless steel, so it's hard as hell. It's nanolite, so it's super durable. It's like the most durable ceramic on the planet. It's black. He wanted stealthed out. I mean, I want to put the pentalites on, but at the same time, I know he's going to want the microwaves. I know he's going to want, I mean, 1.5 grams is nothing. And even though he's willing to pay anything, sometimes, you know, you need to be sensible. And in this option, I really think the microlites are going to win. So we found our guides. Simple as that. So, I mean, that's pretty much everything for the components. I mean, there is some few things we've not thought of and I was just going through my head now when I'm gonna calculate it up in a minute. We need a hook keeper. So, I mean, they weigh nothing, but I'm gonna weigh it anyway, uh, if it even weighs out. 0 0.24 grams, just tons of weight. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, it's a weight, but yeah, it's there. I could even use a titanium one, which is gonna save me 0 0.3 grams. But I think we're going to go with the black stainless steel one. He's not going to mind that too much. Then, of course, we've got things like, you know, the sundries. Uh, there's going to be some arbors. There's going to be glue, epoxy, thread. And we've chucked a tip ring in the build weight as well. So I'm going to put in a bit of weight for that as well. So I'm going to get my head working. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but I'm going to get using some math, work it out, and let's see what it comes out at. So let's work it out. I mean, I've gone through everything. I've worked out every single weight for every single component, and I've even chucked in quite a hefty amount of weight for sundries for the you know thread and epoxy and stuff, which I think I've overshot it, but you know, let, let's see what we're gonna be on that one. It's a hard one to weigh. I'll be honest, I'm gonna use A-grade thread. Uh, I don't know if A-grade thread weighs less than D-grade thread. If anyone knows that, you know, answer me, because the way I look at it, A-grade thread is thinner but it covers less space on the blanks, so it's more wraps. But D-grade thread's thicker, so it should weigh more, but it covers more space on the blanks, so there's less of it. I don't know, actually comment in the section below, uh, let me know what you think on that one, I, the jury's out. But anyway, let's, let's keep going. We're gonna go on the calculator. So we had the guides, we had 1.4 grams, which just seems like a joke. I even checked it like twice, because I didn't believe it, but 1.4 grams for stainless steel guides. Then we're gonna do the winding checks and trims, came at 13 grams, so we're not forgetting those. Then we're doing the blank at 52 grams. Then we have the grips at 14. Then we have the seat at a joke of 17, which is by effect the lightest full body real seat in the world, just so you know. Uh, Kind of crazy, but it's true. So then we have the hook keeper at 0 0.24, which is a joke, I'm even putting that on. And then I have sundries at, I'm gonna give it 20 grams, which is like, that's over 20% of the build. I'm coming in at a total finished rod weight of 117 grams. That's a really light rod. For the rod length, what it is, is over seven foot three. Uh, it can do 30 grams. It's a powerful blank. It's not a blank that's gonna, you know, snap and be, you know, weak when you're flipping the fish in. It's gonna be a durable blank. It's a two piece. So I think we've done really well, to be honest. I mean, yeah, we could do lighter, but then we're not gonna have that durability who wants. We could have stripped off some size of the guides and done a two piece reel seat and tried to get weight down and reduced winding checks and not taking those. But that's what everyone else does, and they're not really that great rods in all fairness, because you're just compensating for weight, and I don't agree with that. I think this is gonna be balanced, and it's gonna be a really nice rod. So, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking, this rod, that's like... 
That's lighter than my iPhone. My iPhone's 300 grams, and I don't get pain in my arm when I'm using this all day long. So if you're gonna worry about 100 and less than 120 grams, then uh, I think we need to reevaluate the situation. Anyway, we've, uh, we've had real fun today. We've gone over everything. We've gone through the durability, the guides. You know, if you're thinking about larger leader knots, maybe you're gonna have to take larger size running guides. If you may be using for salt water, maybe you want more durable, like a stainless steel instead of titanium. Uh, pike rods, maybe you want a larger reel seat. You know, everything is based on the components and the blank and what you're gonna be using it for. Ultralight rods are gonna weigh less. Six foot blank's gonna weigh less than an eight foot blank. Anyway, we've gone through it and I've had a really good fun time. It's opened my eyes to what's available. Uh, this rod's gonna be amazing. I'm looking forward to building it. Who knows, maybe we do a video about that another time. But thanks very much for watching today. This has been Rod Building. I'll see you next time. That was a wrap.